There are three drivers for trading development success. So the first of these is trading confidence and reliability. And there are three confidences. First of all, there's the belief that you can do it. Belief you have the capacity to learn and follow through on what you need to do to become the trader you can become. Even if it feels hard. And quite often, when I'm working with inexperienced traders or traders who have had average results over a long period of time, what you'll find is that invariably it's a confidence issue. It's too hard, I can't do it, I can't do it, I'm just not going to learn. I'm just going to find somebody who's going to give me trade signals and off they pop. The second thing to do with confidence is that you have the confidence and belief in what you're hearing that could make a difference to your trading. If I can, I can talk till I'm blue in the face about the importance of measuring what you do when you trade, about the importance, about the essential nature, if you want to become the, the trader you can become, of journaling your trading. Hands up, who journals the trading? Who has a written trading journal that they record every, every single trade in? Now, if you don't believe that's gonna make a difference, are you gonna do it? If I say, oh, that might, that, that might talk about trading journals again. Every time I come on a webinar or a seminar that he does, he talks about measuring your trading. And yet you're still not doing it. So either I'm very wrong or you're very wrong. It can only be one of the two, can't it? What if I'm right? So how do we develop a confidence or a belief that what you hear or what you learn is going to make a difference? You give it a go. If theoretically something could make a difference, then give it a go. Because we'll only change, we'll only develop confidence in what we are doing if we try things out, if we suck and see. And the third confidence is, and this is where the reliability comes in, is that you have confidence in your trading system that it will produce results on an ongoing basis. If we look at the number one cause of ill-disciplined trading, it's because you think your trading system isn't good enough. Assuming, of course, you've got one written down in a trading plan. Which again, there's lots of stuff up here that we do, isn't there? But if you want to develop the confidence to enable you to become disciplined, then you've got to believe your system can work for you. So you should strive to create this evidence that my system works. If I follow it, it works. If you don't have that confidence, you won't follow your system all of the time. Oh my God, it's going to keep on going, so therefore I'm going to, not put, I'm going to move my profit target away. Oh my God, it's going to turn around. I'm going to exit this trade early. Oh my God, it's going to come back up again, therefore I'm going to remove my stop. And just, because on the next candle, it's going to bounce. I know it's going to bounce. Anytime you do anything like that, what you are saying is my trading system isn't good enough. The only way to change that is to provide evidence that it is. And how do we know something is good enough? Because its outcomes are reliable. Great session this morning on risk management and looking at the maths behind, uh, behind risk. Now, you may not at this stage be in a position where you, are in a, where you want to or have the time to go into that level of, of analysis but there's some very basic things you can do to say that this system is reliable. And why is reliability so important? Why is this confidence so important? Because this is how you decide to scale. If you're trading one contract of a share CFD or one, uh, one FX lot, how do you know when it's time to increase that? You know when it's time to increase that when you get reliability results. So if you can say with certainty, with confidence, that this system works for me, that's when we can start to up our game, yes? And yet what we do as traders is we put a chunk of cash in the market and we just start trading it. Boom, 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 boom. Because we're not going to make any money if we're only trading the smallest possible, the smallest possible amount. Does that make sense? So we don't. Because we're greedy and we're impatient. 
Whereas what we should be doing is trading the very smallest of amount, make sure we've got that reliability of results, and then we push the foot on the accelerator. Second driver is trading self-relevance. Unless trading is important to you, you will not do what it takes to become the trader you can become. Because it requires work. You might be quite happy popping along to some meetings and doing the social thing. You might be quite happy seeing your portfolio go up and down, up and down, and not doing anything about it or optimizing what you're doing in your trading. Why do we do that? Because it's not important enough to us. So you need to ask yourself the question, how relevant, how important is trading or could trading become to me? What's my purpose for trading? If your purpose for trading is really to produce a, an, a type of investment or trading approach that will create some additional choices for you, that's a very different purpose to just have some money popping up and down in the market. Maybe it'll go up, maybe it'll go down, but it's okay. It's not gonna make a difference to my world. So you need to be, have clarity of purpose based on a level of importance of trading and some developmental evidence to say I am moving towards that. The third driver is what I would term trading locus of control and this is uh, recognizing that there is certainty and uncertainty in trading, recognizing that you have to mitigate for that, exercising control over those things you can and moving towards a team approach rather than dependence. And what I mean by that is often the first question that, you, that successful traders are asked, and some of you will be in this position, is what indicators do you use to get in? They, they want to know what you're doing, what you're doing, particularly to get in, when of course it's getting out that's the major issue for most people. And or people will go down a trade signals route and that, that is fine if that's what they want to do, but that is not creating an independent trader. Ties in with self-relevance. So by a team approach, is of course, it's a team in a broader aspect, of course, use some good education. Have a good educator who becomes part of your team intermittently when you need a top-up. Utilize the amazing network that ATAA are to bounce ideas off each other. Traders are only on business, and this is one of the strengths about an organization like this. So these should all become part of your team, but you shouldn't be dependent on them for your trading success because or what's your trading success dependent on? You. Not me, not the ATAA, not your broker, you. If you have a locus of control that's external, it means you're relying on other people for your decisions. If you have an internal locus of control, it, it means that you are making your own decisions, you're exercising control and independence over what you can do as a trader. And this may include the system, what you learn, the systems you use, the systems you develop, whether you measure, whether you don't measure, your trading time and how you use it, execution on entry, intra-trade management, how you exit, giving yourself permission not to trade when you shouldn't be. You can exercise control over absolutely everything to do with your trading apart from one thing. And that's what happens to the price of whatever you're trading. Everything else is in your control. But one of the reasons people don't take that on board and exercise that control is all of a sudden it becomes your fault. If you take on all that, what you're saying is, my results are my fault. No, I'm having some good results and oh, what a great trader I am, or I'm having some bad results and it's that bloody market again, or it's the Fed chairman, or it's the RBA. You have control if you choose to use it. Trading is about the choices you make, not only on a day-to-day -day basis with individual trades, but on a continuous basis in terms of how you develop and what you do. Does that make sense? Sorry, I should have, I should have checked. Make sure you turn your sensitivity meters down a little bit. Okay, because I'm from the north of England and, and we call a spade a spade. Okay? So do, don't feel as I'm, please don't feel as I'm deliberately trying to be contrary or I'll pick on you. So we start with those three drivers and then we move to 
looking at how results are created, which ties in with that. So we all see the same markets, don't we? So if I look at a chart on my computer of the, uh, of the AUD, USD, or um, PLS, or, or the NASDAQ, you can see exactly the same chart, yes? And you can put on exactly the same indicators, yes? And you can choose what time you look at it, yes? And if we all looked at the same market at 3, 3 p.m. on Monday, then we'd all see the same picture, wouldn't we? Yes or no? no. Yes. And ultimately, with this market that we're all seeing, exactly the same market that we're all seeing, it creates an outcome or, or, or creates a set of results, yes? So if we're all seeing the same markets and we have, all have the potential to create some outcomes, then if that market that we're seeing is the stimulus, then there's three things that can influence what happens to the results at the back end. First of these is how we interpret markets, what I'll call market IQ. So what's happening in terms of general risk, what's happened in terms of opportunity, what's happening in terms of not only how it's moving now, but how it might move in the coming days, weeks, or even minutes. But we have to have a degree of skill in interpreting markets. We have to develop and apply some systems. So then we've got systems IQ. And then, of course, we have to make some decisions and take some action, what I'll call decision-making IQ. Now, why are those all in the brain? Because it all depends on you. So that's the bad news, is if you don't master this stuff, you're not going to do it. You're not going to make it. But the great news is, if everything is in your control and you can do this, then the power to create a set of results as a trader on an ongoing basis is yours if you choose to take it. Does that make sense? Does that excite you? It should do, because you've got an opportunity here and there's many people in this room who are doing what it takes. But there is no one in this room who hasn't got the ability or opportunity to do it. It's a choice. You do or not do. Trade safe and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now.